right. That's going to be a lot better right there. That's, that's, that's going to be a lot better. Well, that, hey, that was a man that didn't need anything. He didn't need none of that extra stuff, did he? That's good stuff. Good stuff. I sent that to Ron and it, in, the, in the text it said the jerk and he thought I was calling him one. So I had to clarify that. I didn't, I didn't trim it down like I needed to, but I'm not the computer guy that everybody thinks I am. Let me open us up with prayer this morning. Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord, and we just thank you for all you've done in our lives, the way you've been there for us, the way you've, uh, you've cared for us, you've protected us, you've guarded us, you've, you've provided, you've, you've been everything we've ever needed. And Lord, I just ask you to be with us this morning as we open up your word and we learn from it, Lord, that you would grow our hearts and you would expand our knowledge and that you would grow us into the men and women, the husbands and wives, the children that you need us to be. Lord, we love you and we, we thank you and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This morning, the scripture we're going to be looking at is in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. If you have your Bibles with you, I hope y'all do. I uh, hope you have it with you. But if not, I got one right here we got from the hotel. And uh, we... <laughs> They're free. They're free. Every time you stay, that's part of the, they know that you're going to take them. Um, first John chapter two, 15 through 17. I don't steal Bibles from the hotel. Y'all don't think that I hardly ever do that. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in them for everything in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I love this, I love this piece of scripture. And it's, uh, it's John, uh, his teaching, and, and he starts it off with a, instead of a, a teaching, or a, uh, he starts it off with a command. He says, do not love the world or anything in it. He's pretty. It, it's a pretty clear, uh, pretty clear set of instructions. He didn't uh, beat around the bush about it like some people in today's society seems to do, and uh, he made it pretty clear. And I was studying that and breaking it down, and uh, I was reminded of uh, a scripture out of Matthew. Uh, Verse 33, it says, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And it's a, it's a reminder for us when we start thinking about possessions and thinking about all the things that we need to do and acquire and get and pay for and deal with, you know, that if we, sometimes we have to shift our thinking. God, let's put that right there so I know where it says. Sometimes we have to shift our thinking to, hey, wait a second, who is it that provides these things for us? Who is it that takes care of us? Who is it that gives me the, the hands to work, the ability to go out, the health to be able to, uh, to go do my job or to, to go uh, get these things? I love that scripture. That's one of the ones in the hard drive here that, uh, that I, I lean on every day. I was thinking about, as I was looking at verse one, at the, the first portion of this about do not love the world or anything in it. I was, I was looking at in Exodus at the 10 commandments and I saw the one that talked about, uh, that I'm a jealous God. He says, uh, you should not bow down to any of the idols or worship them for the Lord, your God is a jealous God. And, uh, he's a good God. Who knows that? If he's a good, has he been good to anybody in here? I know that's right. He's been too good to me, twice what I deserve. But he's a jealous God. And I make him mad sometimes when I put things ahead of him. I get out there ahead of him sometimes and I, uh, I start thinking I know what I'm doing and 
And I'm, I'm like, God, I got this. I got this. Don't, you know, don't trouble yourself with this. And uh, are things I forget to pray about. You know, uh, uh, I was talking to a friend this morning about praying for things and, and uh, prayer requests and what we need to pray for. And, and I was reminded, he reminded me that God said pray about all things. And in, and in all things, we're supposed to bring, bring it to God in prayer. And, and, uh, and I appreciate him for that. Do not love the world or anything in the world. And I got to thinking about it. It kind of clicked. I thought, wait a second. Well, what about John 3, 16? Y'all know that. For God, so what? Love the world. And then here, John's saying, don't love the world. But, you know, I think that we're talking about two different things. You know, sometimes in the Bible, we get hung up on something and we see that uh, it says something, but we're talking about two different things. God so loved the world. Who do you think he's talking about? Y'all. Absolutely, he loves y'all. I've seen it. I know it. He loves what he's created. He loves, uh, he loves the horses. He loves the dogs and the, all the animals. Uh, he probably even loves cats. But... Uh, <laughs> We're talking about two different things. I just wanted to clarify that. It goes on to say, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Man, that's scary. That's scary. You know, uh, and there's people we come in contact with every day that have their priorities all out of whack. Maybe some of us had our priorities out of whack for a season. I know I did. I've, I've definitely been in a... Uh, been on the other side in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. And I don't expect y'all to buzz through these so quick. Uh, it says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And I was studying that, that in all my different Bibles that I throw out. And I was looking in, in my King James and it, and it, it calls it uh, mammon. You cannot serve both God and mammon, which means riches. And, uh, and there's so many times in life, and we see it more and more, and especially when the economy gets a little shaky, when, the, uh, when everything, everybody kind of gets worried, that's when you see, that's when it's hard to buy stuff, it's hard to find bullets, it's hard to find stuff like that, you know. And so that's just one thing. I, yeah, it's hard to find. I ain't supposed to talk about that. Uh, but it's tough. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really tough. And in, in the, uh, the, current, the current days that we're living in, and then the more we read, the more we look into the, uh, that back book in the Bible, you start seeing things as they are for sure. But this scripture, 1 John chapter 2, it goes on as you break it down. It says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. And sometimes we think about that and we think, well, you know what? We know that God wants us to have life and have it what? More abundantly. And we know that. And he's done it in our lives. Who, who in here has been given more abundance. Who who in here has been blessed more than you deserve? I'll raise both hands. I deserve. I, I don't deserve what he's what he's done for me. But while God wants to bless you, He don't want us to bless ourselves. You know, I've got I've got three kids, and and I I love my kids, and and it's nice seeing them grow and and progress. But I still like getting them gifts, you know, and when they, when they go out and they get things for themselves, you know, that's good, but I still enjoy buying, buying gifts for them and being a, and giving them gifts because it makes me feel good. And I know it makes them feel good. And God's the same way. He's the same kind of daddy. He, uh, he loves giving us good gifts. You know, this, this part of the scripture, it's got some it talks about the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. And, you know, there's a story in the Bible that talks about that. And Pastor Reggie, he's talked about it up here about King David. 
You know, he was a man after God's own heart. God loved him so much. I love reading about King David. But King David fell into that part. He, uh, y'all remember uh, Sheba that was taking a bath? What was her name? Bathsheba, right? And she was taking a bath, but she was taking it outside. And that's the beginning of all the mix-up. And so uh, that's, that's exactly what, and I don't need to go into that whole, uh, that's a whole other sermon, but I don't need to go into that. But y'all know what that's talking about. And the pride of life, it talks about the pride of life. And I got to, I got to thinking, well, what does that mean? You know, because I'm happy to be alive. You know, there's, there's many times in this whole world, and I think there's a lot of us that's, we've come close, you know, to uh, whether driving or, you know, calls we've been on or whatever, you know, there could have been, there could have been a million times that, that uh, you know, that they put me in the ground. But so I thought, well, what is the pride of life? And, I, and the more I studied it, it's, uh, it talks about to be our own God. And not to uh, not to want to be not to not to want to do God's job. And I got to studying about that, and I got to thinking about it, and I I remembered the story about King Nebuchadnezzar that Pastor Reggie was telling up here. It hadn't been long ago. Uh, he was talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be a god of his all of his all by himself. He wanted to be the uh, be, be the God. And uh, unfortunately, there were, there were three little boys, young men, that uh, they believed in, in the God of the real God, our God. And uh, they wouldn't worship him. And them boys, they weren't from around here. They had foreign names. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You never see that on around here, but, uh, but they, uh, man, that was such a cool story. And I, I remember pastor Reggie telling us about that and, and, and what it, what it did, you know, to show their faith and to get thrown into that, that furnace. And even the guards that threw them in, it talks about how they just, they disintegrated, you know, it was so, so hot. So pride of life crossed me out on that. I don't want any part of that, for sure. Um, it says, but the world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. And I love that part. I love that part. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12. It talks about a man, it talks about building when we build things and, and what we should use is, as construction material. And who knows that now construction materials through the roof. If anybody's been to Home Depot and had to buy any kind of lumber or any kind of thing, and allegedly it's coming down a little bit, I hope it is. Um, but they, uh, they talked about this and they said that... Uh, you know, if you build something out of wood, hay, or stubble, that it burns up, that it that everything will be tested by fire, and it'll the fire will tell what it is. It talks about if we build out of out of tra out of good things, that the fire the fire won't burn it up, but it the wood, hay, and stubble obviously will go like that. And I was reading about that and studying on that, and I thought, man the fires, the trials, the things that's gone on. And I think, man, there's so many of my loved ones in church, people I care so much about, that's been through little fires here and there. And it's scorched and it's burnt at things in their life. And there's been trials in this, in this area and trials in this area. And, uh, and God's been good, though. I mean, how many of y'all have had little fires in your life? You know, how many of us have been through little... Uh, little spots in our life where it's a low spot and, and you're like, man, God, what are you doing? Why, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this fire in my life? This, this, this tough spot in my life and God's just burning all that wood, hay and stubble away, isn't he? But you know what? He always, 
He always reveals the good parts of us, and it always gets stronger. The Bible says, whosoever believes in God should not perish, but have eternal life. We, we hear that in John three sixteen. As I was watching this video and I was thinking about all the, all the stuff that, that Steve Martin, I couldn't remember his name, Steve Martin's picking up as he's walking out. You know, I need this and I need this and I need this. And it's that time of year when everybody's, everybody's making a list, you know, and, and I've been making my list and I've got a new 45 that I need because I need it. And I need, yeah, and there's some tools that I need and, and uh, some new boots because boots don't last forever, you know. <laughs> and uh, so there's a bunch of different stuff, you know, and I get, to, I get to thinking about making my list and turning it into the boss lady. And then I think, wait a second, I don't want to be like, like Steve Martin and just doing all this stuff. And I'm pretty sure that my, my new 45 is probably in a ship out in the ocean waiting to come in, <laughs> coming in. From, no, wait, no, they make those in New Hampshire. So you can still, <laughs> thank y'all. Thank y'all for helping me with that. I appreciate that. That's, I expect to see that. But why do people put stuff, why do people collect so much stuff? And just like him walking out the door collecting that stuff, and I got to thinking about it. You know, we sometimes collect stuff to keep our, our mind off of our relationship with God and making that relationship strong and making that relationship grow and making that relationship what it needs to be. You know, it takes time an investment to make a relationship work. And, and, you know, those of us that are married, those of us that have boyfriends and girlfriends, those of us that are maybe newly engaged. Oh, I'm not supposed to say nothing about that. Uh, those of us that are, uh, you know, we, we know what it takes, the investment of, uh, of a relationship. And so sometimes we put stuff ahead of working on those relationships with God that we need. And it, it passes the time. And it's coming up to time, again, it's coming up to time to spend plenty of money. Huh? What? I'm sorry, but you can't throw that out there and just leave it hanging like that. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, I can't, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Jean. I'm... Well, I told him, I told Jonas and Jenna, I wouldn't say nothing though. No, I... <laughs> little. Mark for Miss Jean there. Thank you. I, I sometimes get by with a little help from my friends. You know, I think that's a, isn't that a song? Huh? Well, I told him I wasn't going to say nothing. And Miss Jean did, so that's good. I'm so happy. I, it's, it's, a, it's a big day in the Rickman house. It really is. We're excited. You know, every time we have, every time we've had kids, you know, had, it's happened three times we've had new kids come home and from the hospital, and now we got one, we got a new one, so we're excited. I'm excited about a new daughter. So uh, anyway, okay, <laughs> thank you, Miss Jean. <laughs> I didn't mean to just leave it there. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 it warns us, it says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. 
for where your treasure is, your heart will be also. That's what I love about coming in here every Sunday morning and meeting with all y'all because the thing we share in common is where your heart is. And I know where your hearts are. Your heart's for God. Your heart's for the things that, not of this world, the things beyond this world. Because we're just here for a little bit, you know. And y'all, y'all encourage me very much. And I hope that I encourage y'all a little bit. And I bring that all together to tell you, based on this sermon, hey, don't be a jerk. I guess that's, that's the, that's the uh, just like the video, don't be a jerk, you know. Don't put the things, don't put the, uh, don't put the stuff ahead of your relationship in Christ. You know, we, there's so many things that we do in, in our, daily, our daily time. This is a reminder. This is a, a reminder for me, a reminder for y'all of all the stuff and all the walking out and grabbing this and that as we go. Because I know when I walk out the door, it's just like that. You know, we have to grab our wallets and our phone and our pistol and our all the things that we have to grab before we go out. And so I walk out and I'm like, my pockets are full. And so, but what do I not walk out with? Yeah, I always forget. And I got no excuse. I bet you I've got 20 Bibles. I've got them in every car. Some, sometimes I can't find them because I don't know which car I left them in. They're all over the place. You know, I remember uh, Brother Reggie was talking about if we carried our Bible like we carried our phone. You know, how, how awesome would that be? You know, but we don't. We don't. Ultimately, the, uh, the one thing that we can, that we can glean from this about not loving the world or anything in it is to love God with all our hearts, all our souls and all our minds. And the first thing to that is making sure to know that we know that should he come home, should he call us home today, should a plane crash on our heads on the way home from church, that we know that we know without a shadow of a doubt that we'd be in heaven with him today. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for these families here and these, these my families here that, uh, that come to worship you and to learn from you. I thank you for the scriptures you've given us that, that grow us, that strengthen us, that encourage us, and that lead us in our lives. Lord, and I pray for, for my loved ones here that you would, uh, you would bless their hearts as the season the, the, our, this is our flagship season as Christians. This is, this is when we're supposed to shine. This is when everybody's looking to us as, as we are ambassadors to you. Lord, help us to be good ambassadors. Lord, help us to shine your light, to, ref, to, to reflect your light at this world, at this lost and dying world, the people that need us, the people that are, that are running low on hope, the people that are running low on on care, the people that are running low on love. Lord, help us to be your hands and your feet and your mouthpiece that we may that we may do your work. And Lord, I pray for any person here that doesn't know you as their Savior. Lord, that you would burden their heart, that you would give them no peace, that you would give them no rest, you would give them no comfort until they pray this prayer, that they would pray with me. They could pray it out loud. They could pray it to themselves, they could whisper it. Lord, I know you don't care, but they would pray this prayer. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, I confess that apart from you, I can do nothing. I've tried it my way and my way fails. I've tried it the world's way. The world's way fails. I want to try it your way because I know that it won't fail. It's not designed. It doesn't have failure in the design. Lord, I want you to be my savior. I want you to take all my burdens. I want you to take all my cares. I want you to take all my heartaches and cast them as far as the east is to the west. I trust you. I know you died on the cross and you did it for me. I'm whosoever. 
Lord, I commit my life to you. And I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen.